Hi everybody, this is Alex Gorbunov from Intero Visuals with another video demonstration for you. This time I want to show you how to model the lampshade for this light fixture. Or specifically speaking, I want to show you a cool technique about creation of a bunch of tangled lines in just a couple of clicks. Now the reason why I want to show you that technique is because I remember a couple years ago I was browsing that my favorite 3D forums and I found somebody asking a question about how to model that particular lampshade for the similar light, light fixture and in response there were a lot of suggestions how to make it, some people suggesting it to make as a texture or a displace map, uh, somebody was suggesting to make it as a bunch of uh, splines drawn on a sphere with some plugin. And although uh, all of those techniques will apply and will get you the desired result, I think I'm actually quite sure that a similar result can be achieved with literally just a couple of clicks and with a little bit of creativity and improvisation. So again, this is what the 3D model looked like. And let me go ahead and show to you how to make the lampshade. So open the first file from the project folder. And what you'll see there is some starting point in form of the metal frame for that light fixture. And let's go ahead and create the lampshade. So this is how we do it. On the create panel, uh, go ahead and click a geosphere button to create a geosphere. Create it in the middle of that uh, frame and approximately with the same diameter. You don't need to have a surgical precision, just make something that roughly have the same size of that circular frame. Now you don't need to change any basic parameters, just keep everything default. And the reason why we create Geosphere is because uh, I like its nature, I like how it's made from triangles, so it will just help us a little bit. So let's go ahead and convert this object into editable poly by clicking right mouse button over it and choosing convert to editable poly and let me also move it to this side so we can uh, see it a little bit better. Now go to edge sub object mode and select all edges by pushing ctrl a on the keyboard. Now with all edges selected on the modify panel scroll a little bit down and click create shape from selection button and that will give you a dialog which will ask you how you want to create the shape from your selection of edges. So go ahead and choose smooth option and hit OK. So what you see is that you've created a spline, editable spline object from your selection of edges. And let me move this sphere to the side so you can see our spline better now. So this is our editable spline object where every edge that used to be selected now turn into the segment of this editable spline object. And because we chose that we want a smooth type of spline, you can see this nice, nice little side effect. This spline, uh, editable spline object that represent our sphere has nice little sort of distortion to it, which you can see has a great potential. So all we need to do now is just create a little bit more distortion to it and may, maybe make it a little bit more dense. So let's go ahead and uh, do that, those things uh, step by step. So first, uh, let's make it better visible in the viewport. So on the modify panel of this editable spline object, go, go ahead and enable enable in viewport checkbox so you can see this object as a geometry. Now let's also change a couple parameters. Number of sizes uh, too much, 12 for this object. It will be uh, too heavy uh, polygon count wise. So let's uh, narrow it down to uh, five. You can go a little bit higher. It's all up to you. It's, it's going to be Again, your call about level of detail, but I think 5 would work just fine. We just have to increase our smooth threshold, I think, to something like 80. So go ahead and increase that threshold parameter to 80. You can see the splines are smooth. Uh, we also might want to increase the steps parameters just a little bit to uh, make the, uh, these curves a little bit smoother along the length. So maybe uh, click it twice to get it up to eight steps. And again, this would be up to you. You can go higher if you have a high-end computer with lots of memory, and uh, I think eight would be just fine in our case. Okay, so let's go ahead and distort it a little bit more. So go ahead and apply noise modifier to it from the list of modifiers. 
and set for the strength uh, parameters for the each of three axes, x, y, and z. Let's set 10, 10 units. So now when we set strength parameter to 10, let's decrease a scale parameter down to, let's see, 20, maybe 10. I think 10, 10 looks better. And let's add even more roughness to this object by enabling fractal uh, checkbox and increasing the roughness parameter. You can just use your eye judgment. I guess maybe let's uh, round it up to one, uh, maybe too much, maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.7. I think 0.7 looks better. And uh, yeah, number of iterations will be fine as default, which is six. Okay, so you can see this already look like something has great potential. And the only thing that is not quite there yet is the level of density. So which is not a problem, let's go ahead and create another copy of this object uh, by doing the following thing. Click select and rotate button on the toolbar. So that will enter you in a select and rotate mode. Uh, hold shift on your keyboard and rotate this object in your viewport just, just randomly. Just give it some random rotation. Release left mouse button and on the clone options dialog hit OK to confirm that you want to make a copy. So hit OK. Now this copied object, although rotated in space a little bit, that creates a little bit of variation to it. It still has the same noise modifier applied and what we want to do here is we want to keep all the same parameters but yet to make it look a little bit different. So that can be achieved by changing the seed parameter. So change it from 0 to 1. That will make it the subject to have the same noise modifier but uh, it will just have a little bit different look to it. So, and maybe scale this object down a little bit to keep it sort of not to be superimposed with the other uh, object like that. So go to select and uniform the scale tool. You can click right mouse button over it to bring transform type in dialog. Scale it down just just couple of um, just couple of units, maybe 97% uh, out of original 100 would be fine. Now you can see it's already much denser, but let's make another copy just to, to make it even, even more dense. So um, apply some random rotation and to create maybe additional variation to it, again, change seed parameter to two, so it will look different and maybe also mirror it. So go ahead and click mirror button on a toolbar, mirror it along any axis, X, Y, Z, doesn't matter. I choose Z, you can choose X, that would be fine. So hit OK to confirm. So now we've got our mesh ball that looks like looks like what we want. So maybe it's time to attach everything together. So go ahead and convert uh, one of these into editable poly on a modify panel, scale down and hit attach button. So you can attach two other copies of this object to itself. And now you've got one editable poly object that now we can um, go to front view and put into place on that um, frame where it's supposed to be. We can also delete all geosphere. We don't need it anymore. So now you can see our object aligned and maybe one last correction that we can make is to scale it up a little bit. And by doing so, we will keep this lampshade on the outside of the frame which will make it look more natural. So go ahead and use transform type in dialog for the scale tool. Bring it up and increase it just oops increasing the wrong object. Make sure of course you select your mesh uh, ball and bring up transform type in and increase the scale maybe just a little bit maybe 102 percent 103 percent would be just fine. Well, there you go. So that's pretty much it. You can see how easy this object can be made, how easy and quickly, and it not necessarily can be used in the creation of this particular light fixture. It can be uh, create in any occasion when you need to create a bunch of tangled splines or some chaotically deformed bunch of lines. Here's another particular example uh, in volume two 
of our uh, furniture library, we had um, this top ERI ma model that is basically just a, a shrub with the leaves on it. And if I select and delete leaves elements from this model, you can see that the base is made using the same technique. So as you can see, this technique has a great potential, which makes it very attractive. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have a comment or a suggestion, feel free to send it to us using contact form on our website. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter so you can always be updated with the latest news that we have. Again, this was Alex Gorbanov. I will see you next time.